Hi, my name is Leslie Kays, and this is uh, my response to the three versions of the oral histories. Um, there's the written audio and video. Um, before I took a closer look at the um, oral and audio oral histories, um, typically I was used to uh, reading written oral histories. Uh, mainly in history books and um, autobiographies and biographies and things like that. Just an in-depth look at um, basically anything um, that had to do with history um, in the past or up until this course rather I was just used to reading about history. And again, whether it was about U.S. history, Civil War, or about a specific person, a former president, um, even things such as, um, you know, the greenhouse effect and stuff like that and how the world and earth has changed. Um, the audio, oral histories, I enjoy. However, um, it's lacking something. I'm, I'm listening to voices and I'm putting pictures in my head and trying to visualize what these folks look like, um, which is kind of interesting, I guess, because I'm putting a picture in my head and I'm matching a, the, the, the face with the voice. Um, I, did, uh, I did enjoy the Stud Turkle's interviews with the Dawn Kelly, the, the young college student, and... Um, I liked listening to her, her take on um, prejudice and racism and certain biases that she experienced in the classroom. And uh, she was quite educated and you could tell through her, um, her interview with Tur um, Stud Turkle that she was enraged and it meant a lot to her. It was um, something that truly really affected her in life. Uh, the other gentleman he, that Stud Turkle interviewed, he, I liked how he put his family first, so I was picturing this family man and he was a church-going man and he mentioned his family and children and stuff, stuff like that and then he said something about he was, uh, what he did as a career, I believe he was a cameraman. And then lastly that um, the woman from the audio oral history, I think her name was um, Dolores Lenore Leola Span, something like that. Um, I enjoyed how she talked about her past and moving to Chicago and whatnot. But again, I think I would have preferred a video oral history, and that brings me to my next, um, the third. Um, oh. Sorry, I just spaced it. The third genre of oral history. Um, and I have to say, this one I prefer the most. Um, mainly because of the effects of the oral, the, the video oral history. Um, it brings out a lot more awareness. And what I mean by that is there's such a strong connection. You're watching someone um, being interviewed and talking about his or her um, reaction to something or his or her reaction to the topic. Um, the two examples we had to watch for this week um, for the oral history um, was the families of war. I mean... Honestly, I got choked up. I got choked up in both of them um, because both both topics, families of war and physical disabilities, they're um, they're packed with emotion. Uh, right now, we're having we're in a war, and there's men and women who are not coming home, and at least someone knows someone who is affected by it. And to watch the families, the father, the sister, and the mother. Talk about how their sons and daughters or brothers came back and how how they were before as a child and how they were after life. I'm sorry, after war. Um, it, it's you know it's such a emotional ride and roller coaster, and 
So again, I think a video oral history brings the topic, um, brings more awareness to the topic. Uh, physical disabilities, I mean, to this day, there are so many um, bias uh, and racism and prejudice against people who are physically dis disabled. That one gentleman who was being interviewed, you could tell he's extremely educated. He had a lot to say. And just because he slurred and his muscle reaction and his muscular um, um, was delayed meant nothing. Meant nothing. Means nothing to me. Um, I mean, I may be a lot more empathetic towards the physical disabled person because that's my line of work. I work with um, folks who are um, disabled in many different ways, whether it's physically or learning disabled and whatnot, autistic. So uh, my heart goes out to those folks and there's no reason why they should be uh, neglected and made fun of and put down in any way. But um, yeah, that's uh, about it. I definitely, I, I, so to circle back, originally I preferred written oral histories, but uh, after this course, I really like to uh, look at the oral and uh, get, you know, a great response from that. And uh, that's about it. Okay, thanks.